I'm a product designer that was basically working in the automotive industry. Um, worked on mainly AP builds in like in Jaguar and um, Ford. And then I decided that I'd like to work for myself really. So I decided to be a contractor and I worked on hospital bed frames and um, other medical devices. And all the while, while I was being a contractor, I was designing my own products. I did some snowboarding stuff and then I decided to do mountain bikes. So what, what got you into, into the bikes in the first place? Uh, I just always had a bike ever since I could walk, so yeah, I just thought, well, I could probably just about manage to self-fund a bicycle project, so I just decided to have a go. So, do you want to introduce Empire Cycles? Tell us a bit about Empire Cycles and what you're up to. Okay, well, Empire Cycles cycle started in 2006, and I started with uh, a downhill race bike made out of a three-piece casting and I sort of evolved the brand and the products into the all-mountain 150mm product that's behind us and this is the evolution of sort of six years worth of design and knowledge really. So whereabouts are you uh, based? We're based in Bolton. Sonny Bolton. Sonny Bolton in Lancashire. No, sorry, Greater Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, exactly, you know, what, 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 do you, what do you do around the bike? I mean, you're the brainchild behind the bike. But, uh -huh. uh, tell us a bit more about your, you know, what drives you forward on the bike. Well, I start, I design all the products and I take everything from a blank piece of paper to a finished design. But I also do all of the other tasks in between at the minute. So I actually build the bikes for the customers as well. But I don't do all of the tasks all on my own. I, I do have a, a team of people that help me out with the machining side of it and other people that do the graphic designs and I basically bring it all together. together yeah yeah I mean just talk through a little bit how you've uh, used 3d printing to, to mm -hmm. develop the bike I think that might be quite interesting. yeah uh, the first bike I I just I just did it I didn't do any 3d printing on the on the downhill bike and it cost me a lot of money yeah. because the parts didn't work properly um, we made mistakes. Uh, they did fit together correctly, but they weren't quite right. And as I've as I've got more confidence in my own designs, and as the technology has evolved and become cheaper, I've been able to do quite a lot of 3D printing in plastics to prove out the fit and function of the of the components. But as soon as you get one that works, you want to use it. Yeah. It's so frustrating to have the part in your hand in the wrong material. So, I just picked the phone up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that probably brings me on really to uh, you know, talk a bit about how you started collaborating with Renishaw. Yeah. Really. What, what got that going? Well, I was designing the MXX Evo, which is what this bike is based on and as I've said I, I had a plastic model that was a complete bicycle with all the parts attached to it and I desperately wanted to ride it to check it was correct and there was just no way you could make it anything like strong enough so I, um, I did just pick the phone up and I happened to speak to Steve yeah, yeah. Right. and uh, the rest is history, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, it's <laughs> keeping you busy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just talk a little bit about the, about the process that you've gone through, or that I suppose with mm -hmm. Renishaw that you've gone through, mm -hmm. to, to get the bike into the state that it's in today. You know, mm -hmm. what, what sort of 
sort of processes have you gone through? Well, I designed my production product to be made out of castings and extrusions and 3D machine components. And I, I knew that they wouldn't be correct for additive because I'd done some research on how the additive process worked. So we needed to have a, a fairly tight collaboration to understand the designs that would be required for them to build correctly. So I knew that my geometry was correct, but we had to work together to understand how the machine would actually grow the parts without failing or costing a lot of money or warping or distorting. And that process was actually relatively straightforward. So, um, what, what real difference do you think 3D printing's made to the frame? You know, what, what are the advantages? I think, I think that the ability to have something that works months in advance of the production component is well you don't even know what it means to be honest it, it's it's unbelievably valuable because you can go from a CAD model on a Monday to a Friday using the parts so the development time scales it's, it's it's staggering and as you and as you understand how to design the components, you can see ways of doing other things that you would never have thought yeah. of. So it, it, it breeds some creativity in other, in other areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did it feel when you saw the sort of first complete bike? The well, bike? I did all the CAD models in quite a short period of time, over a two or three week period. And I was uploading them onto the FTP and I didn't really ever see them again. And then all of a sudden, one day, there was pictures of the substrate and the, the, the bike frames, parts together. I had no comprehension how the Renishaw engineers were going to actually grow the parts. Why would I? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I handed it over to the experts. Yeah. And it came back, it came back as a box, yeah. Turner Prize, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Have you been so surprised by the, I think the abso interest? Yeah, in the absolutely gobsmacked as to how intrigued and interested and genuinely thought-provoking the whole project has been for everybody. I was having a conversation with my best friend on the weekend that his mum came in the room, sat down. You can 3D print a bike? No, you can't. And obviously you show yeah, the, real thing. the real thing. And and then people who've got no interest in engineering are talking about it, saying, my son's friend has printed a bicycle. <laughs> so probably brings me on to the last question really, which is uh, you know, where do you see the future of 3D printing in, in, the, in the context of bike manufacturing? I honestly, where can you see? I don't think we've even started. I think that we're doing the sensible and obvious thing, which is to make the components in a fairly traditional manner using a non-traditional technique. But I think in terms of the overall manufacturing capability in terms of tooling and components and potentially composite structures is untapped.